Armenia International. You are listening to our half-hour broadcast in English for listeners in Western Europe and North America, the East Coast. We can also be heard on the internet at www.rri.ro channel 1. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter and other social media platforms. Our programs are also available on TuneIn and via satellite Eurosat 16A on 11.5.12 MHz vertical polarization azimuth 16 degrees east. Symbol rate 29,950 mega symbols per second, standard DVB-S2, modulation 8 PSK, audio PID 510. We wish you good reception conditions. Hello, I'm Ana Maria Popescu with the news bulletin. First, here are the headlines. Sunday is the last day when the Romanian citizens who intend to vote from abroad in the presidential election of November 24th may register on www.watstrainatate.ro. The Romanian finance minister Eugen Todorovic believes it is absolutely necessary for any major initiative by the new European Commission to take into account the interests of all member states And the White House confirmed that Hamza bin Laden, the son and successor of Osama bin Laden, the leader of the terrorist network behind 9-11, has been killed. The Permanent Electoral Authority of Romania has run up and posted for public debate a draft law endorsing the guidelines for financing the campaigns for the 2019 presidential election. Meanwhile, the Romanians who live abroad only have Sunday left to announce how they intend to vote in this election by filling in an online form at www.votstainatata.ro. People may choose to vote by post or at polling stations abroad. Also, beginning Thursday and until October 19th, Romanian diplomatic missions may request the foreign ministry to set up polling stations abroad. The first round of Romania's presidential election is scheduled on November the 10th, with the runoff due on November 24th. The Romanian finance minister, Eugen Todorovic, believes it is absolutely necessary for any major initiative of the new European Commission to take into account the interests of all member countries, and not only of the stronger, more influential members. According to a news release issued by the ministry, Eugen Todorovic took part on Friday in a meeting of the Eurogroup in inclusive format and in an informal meeting of the EU Ministers for Economic and Financial Affairs, ECOFIN, organized by the Finnish Presidency of the Council of the European Union. The Eurogroup talks focused on the budget for convergence and competitiveness. The agenda of the ECOFIN meeting, which continued on Saturday, included topics like hybrid threats and the resilience of financial market infrastructure, enhanced action on climate change and rebooting the capital markets union. While in Helsinki, Minister Teodorovic also had a meeting with the Vice President of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, Pierre Heilbronn, with regard to the bank's projects in Romania and its future strategy, as well as to the national strategy to develop the Romanian capital market. The Minister for the Romanian Diaspora, Natalia Intotero, is in Italy until September 18th to discuss with representatives of the Romanian communities in that country about the options for voting in the forthcoming presidential election. Meetings are held in Turin, Milan, Venice, Bologna, Florence, Cagliari, Catania, Cosenza, Bari, Naples and Rome. Other topics approached also include human trafficking and the problems facing the Romanian nationals in various economic sectors in Italy, which is the host of the largest Romanian community abroad, around 1.2 million people. In Romania, the total number of confirmed measles cases is close to 18,300, according to the latest report made public by the National Center for Infectious Disease Monitoring and Control. In the past week, 54 new cases have been reported. Complications caused by this disease have killed 64 people in Romania since the start of the epidemic. 
Nearly 300 troops from Romania, Bulgaria, Georgia, the Republic of Moldova, the United States and Ukraine have taken part this week in a new training module as part of the multinational exercise Black Sea Rotational Force 19 held in the town of Babadag in the southeast of Romania. The module included tactical shooting drills, first aid simulations as well as practice involving command and control procedures. BSRF is an annual exercise conducted by the U.S. Marine Corps Forces Europe in the Balkans, Black Sea and Caucasus regions. The exercise is aimed at enhancing the interoperability of the armed forces by means of joint training for peacekeeping and counterinsurgent operations. The White House confirmed on Saturday that Osama bin Laden's son and successor as al-Qaeda leader Hamza bin Laden was killed, Reuters and France Press report. According to the U.S. presidency, Hamza bin Laden was killed in a counterterrorism operation in the Afghanistan-Pakistan region. Hamza bin Laden was regarded as the favorite son and virtual successor of Osama bin Laden, the founder of the terrorist network behind 9-11, who was also killed in 2011 in Pakistan. We end with sports. The Romanian tennis players Patricia Tsig, Anna Bogdan and Jacqueline Christian Saturday managed to get past the qualifier stage of the Korea Open in Seoul. Two other Romanians, Mihaela Buzărnescu and Irina Begu, are also taking part in the competition. And that was the news on Radio Romania International. Coming up next, The Week in Review. Welcome to the Week in Review, today with me, Cristina Matescu. First, let's have a look at this week's main stories. The Romanian political scene is in turmoil following the departure of the Liberal Democrats from the government. The government approves the extension of the registration deadline for Romanian citizens living abroad who wish to vote in the upcoming presidential elections. The Romanian minister liaising with the Romanians living abroad pays visit to Italy. Romania nominates Rovana Plumb as EU Commissioner and the Georgian Esco Festival is in full swing. The withdrawal of the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats from the coalition government has set the political scene in Bucharest on fire. The disagreements between the Prime Minister and the President have deepened over the former's move to replace the outgoing Liberal Democrat ministers with other Liberal Democrat MPs who say they wish to continue alongside the Social Democratic Party the project they began together in 2016 when they came to power following parliamentary elections. President Klaus Johannes has rejected Prime Minister Viorica Dancila's proposed reshuffle, saying it is unconstitutional, and again urging her to put her cabinet to a vote of confidence in Parliament. Given that, he argues, the political makeup of the government has changed. In response, the Prime Minister says she is not afraid to seek a vote of confidence in Parliament, and has accused the President of undermining efforts to ensure a normal functioning of the government. The Liberal Democrats leader, Kalim popescu Terigiano, has himself accused Viorica Dancila of not complying with constitutional provisions and not respecting the decision of the Liberal Democrats to withdraw from the government, trying all kinds of tactics to avoid a vote of confidence in Parliament. The deadline for the Romanian citizens living abroad who wish to register to vote on the website votstrainatate.ro has been extended until the 15th of September, following an emergency order issued by the government at the request of the Permanent Election Authority. The initial deadline was the 11th of September. The Romanian Postal Service will provide voters with all the necessary materials, namely envelopes, ballots, stamps, stickers and advice on how to vote. Voters living or residing abroad have three options to send the envelopes containing their ballots, namely sending them by post to Romania, sending them by courier to the Romanian diplomatic missions or consular offices in their countries of residence, or taking them in person to the Romanian embassies or consulates. 
More than 71,000 Romanian voters had registered online by the initial deadline. The Romanian minister liaising with the Romanians abroad, Natalia Indotero, is in Italy to meet members of the Romanian communities in this country. Discussions focus on the way in which they can exercise their voting rights in the upcoming presidential elections. Other topics on her agenda include the coagulation of the associative environment and identifying the necessary lines of action to preserve and develop the linguistic, spiritual and cultural identity of the Romanians living abroad. Projects funded by the ministry. Meetings are held with members of the Romanian communities and the associative environment in Turin, Milan, Venice, Bologna, Florence, Cagliari, Catania, Cosenza, Bari, Naples, and Rome. Talks also tackle human trafficking and the problems faced by Romanians in various sectors in Italy. Official data show that Italy is home to the largest Romanian community abroad, numbering around 1,200,000 people. <laughs> Romania's proposal for European Commissioner, the Social Democrat Rovana Plum, will be in charge of transports. The announcement was made by the President-elect of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, who has nominated her entire team. After the hearings in the European Parliament's specialist committees, and as soon as Parliament gives its approval, the European Council will officially appoint the new Commission. Rovana Plum has been a politician for 25 years and has always been a member of the Social Democratic Party, today in government in Romania. She has also served as an MP and has occupied several ministerial positions, including Minister for the Environment, Labour and European Funds. The 24th edition of the Georgia Nesco International Festival is underway until the 22nd of September. Its motto this year is The World in Harmony and its artistic director is Vladimir Zhurovsky. Bucharest and 10 other cities in Romania, as well as five countries, namely Germany, France, Italy, Canada and the Republic of Moldova, are hosting this year associated events, paying tribute to the musical heritage of the great Romanian composer George Enescu. The festival brings together more than 2,500 of the world's greatest musicians and 84 different concerts and recitals grouped in six main sections. Great orchestras of the world, the midnight concerts, chamber concerts and recitals, the music of the 21st century, the Mozart Week in Residence and the International Forum of Composers. Conferences and disc and book launches are also held. And that was the Week in Review. To end, let's have another look at this week's main stories. The Romanian political scene is in turmoil following the departure of the Liberal Democrats from the government. The government approves the extension of the registration deadline for Romanian citizens living abroad who wish to vote in the upcoming elections. The Romanian minister liaising with the Romanians living abroad pays a visit to Italy. Romania nominates Rovana Plum as EU commissioner and the George Enescu festival continues in Bucharest and other cities. <laughs> Andrei Korna is an art historian, an essay writer, a classical studies scholar, a columnist and a philosopher. Tales from Bibi's Age is the title of Andrei Korna's most recent work, a novel brought out by the Humanitas publishers in Bucharest. The title is a transparent allusion to 1984, one of George Orwell's major works, where a world which was in the grip of totalitarianism was led by the symbolic character known as the Big Brother. The historian Ioan Stanomir was the host of the launch venued by the upscale Humanitas Cinshmiju bookshop in Bucharest. 
Here he is speaking about tales from baby's age. Aș începe prin a spune că e una dintre cele mai ambițioase cărți. I would like to begin by saying it is one of the most ambitious books that have been launched recently. Were it only for the fact that Andrei Cornea tries to strike up a dialogue with an illustrious tradition, such as that of the dystopia, thereby imagining a dialogue with one of the 20th century most unsettling books, George Orwell's 1984, from the perspective of a troubled, sensitive consciousness in the 21st century. It is a troubled and unsettling book, It is a meditation on people's ability to adapt and on people's inability to perpetuate the cult of the memory and the duty of telling the truth. It was also historian Ioan Stanomir who said that although after reading Andrei Kornes' text seems to be clearer than 1984, the famous work it strikes up a dialogue with, The novel Tales from Bibi's Age documents a moral degradation as well as a perversion of memory which deepened the feeling of ontological pessimism. Andrei Kornes' recently launched novel is therefore a useful instrument for today's readers, whether they are or not passionate about intertextuality. Here is Ioan Stanomir once again. I believe that, as we speak, such a book can be appealing to a readership made up of several layers. It may target those who are passionate about human nature and can discover the reflections of a moderate pessimism on the extent to which human nature is almost irredeemably corrupted by dictatorship. Then they may also find reflections on how dictatorship was reinvented as controlled democracy. And eventually the book may also target those who look at literature as an addition of echoes of the texts that had been written before it. Literary critic Cosmin Ciotloș participated in the launch of Andrei Kornel's book. Cosmin Ciotloș emphasized the scope of the unprecedented literary endeavor that of striking up a dialogue with one of the major dystopias of the 20th century. Literar vorbind, avem de-a face cu o carte... Literary speaking, what we have here is one of the most audacious books, one of the boldest, which not only tackles a difficult genre, the dystopian one, but also tackles one of the 20th century's founding and essential books. And it does that, recomposing its entire... inventing that context, doing some sort of docu-fiction which is of the highest quality, even with George Orwell's 1984. In Tales from Baby's Age, Andrei Korna takes up on George Orwell's character, imagining it as living after the collapse of the veterinary imported by the big brother. For Cosmin Chotlosh, the behavior of the other characters revolving around that Winston Smith is the unique selling point in Andrei Korna's novel. The big surprise in this book questions any one of us has no choice other than to ask them in the long run once we see what is going on here. One such question is How bad our effective ideological memory were? How is it that an entire world having an encounter with this myth can take his memoirs for a novel? How is it possible for all people there, save for some unassuming and debatable exception, to say that the manuscript he submits to the publisher has an exceptional imagination, a deranged imagination, just as some publisher called it, and that such trouvaille will surely sell? These are not trouvai, it is some sort of reality that man had experienced. As a literary critic, I was baffled by the bunch of those amnesic characters who were so good at reading that. They read them, they were literary critics, they like it. They get their kicks out of speculating around it, and are so intelligent doing that, yet they are not fair. The intelligence of speculation does not mean the truth. And now here is Andrei Korna himself speaking about there is memory, but also about the freedom he gave his character tales from Bibi's age. The issue of memory, which is a theme in its own right here in my novel, 
should be taken with a grain of relativity. It is true that the amnesia does exist of the many people who only reminisce trifles and rather funny things and little worries from the age of the dictatorship, just as so many people do today. I mean, those who say it was not so bad in Ceausescu's time. I do not want to condemn them. In my novel, at least, I let them live as well. The amnesiacs, or those who are relatively amnesic, have the feeling that Winston Smith, the character I borrowed from Orwell, exaggerates, that he is a radical. Perhaps they're right, in a way. I do not want to be positive about it, as that is the privilege the novel has as compared to the essay. You don't have to decide, but you should let your characters embody different viewpoints. You don't have to be consistent with yourself all along. And that was World of Culture. Coming up next on Radio Romania International... Culture and Nature. Welcome, I'm Ana Maria Popescu. With the number of heritage buildings in Romania quite large and the funds required for their upgrade always scarce, a minimal intervention is necessary in order at least to prevent them from collapsing or deteriorating beyond repair. This is precisely why the Ambulance for Monuments has been created as a pilot project focusing for the time being on just a handful of sites in several counties in Romania. Maria Tomashan, president of the Vernacular Cultural Association, has recently launched this project in Arad County, concurrently with similar initiatives in other parts of the country. Maria Tomashan with details about the goal of the project. The project was initiated three years ago by a group of people concerned with the state of our architectural heritage, and it has been implemented through an association called Monumentum. Later on, it extended to several regions in Romania with similar activities. The general goal of the project is to protect architectural heritage and to ensure the security of buildings that or on the verge of collapsing. Everything is done with the help of volunteers. The thumb rule of the project is where there is at least some support for purchasing the materials, volunteers will take care of everything from obtaining the required permits to actual repair works. So we basically eliminate the major factors that cause the damages and jeopardize the stability of the building. We do what we can for the building not to fall. We try to rescue the monument from complete destruction, hoping that in a not very distant future, the funds and human resources needed for actual refurbishment will be found. So far, the Ambulance for Monuments has rescued six heritage sites in southern Transylvania, the Romanian Renaissance-style gate in Sumbata de Sus village, the fortified church in Vels, the Monument of Heroes in Seleuș, the Orthodox Church in Gerdal, the ruins of the Defense Tower in Apatza, and the railway station in Shaesh. All works were done by volunteers and financed from donations made by a number of NGOs, including the Prince of Wales' charitable fund. Maria Tomashan. Anyone can be a volunteer. We have in our team construction engineers, architects, students. But apart from them, there are people interested in arts and crafts willing to learn firsthand how to make a heritage building safe. So anyone can be a part of this. The pilot project of the Arad County Ambulance for Monuments took place between September the 3rd and 15th in the village of Lungshwara and concerned the wooden church dedicated to St. George. You have been listening to Culture and Nature.
And with that, our broadcast in English for listeners in Western Europe and North America, the East Coast, has come to an end. You can listen to our next program for Western Europe at 22 hours UTC on 59.45 kHz and 73.10 kHz. Our listeners in North America, the East Coast, can listen to us at 0 hours UTC on 60.40 kHz and 73.75 kHz. We can also be heard on the internet at www.rri.ro channel 1. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write an email at engl at rri.ro. Goodbye.